Okay, here's just a little follow-up video, which I thought would be um, just a little bit of an interesting thing for you. Um, I do go over all this with my uh, elite players, and it's it's sort of common sense in a lot of ways, but you know, I think it's very intuitive for a lot of golfers, but uh, it can also be a little bit of an eye-opener at times. And one of the things I get all my tour players to do, my elite players, is I want them to know their dispersion with certain golf clubs. I'm just going to talk specifically about the driver and maybe the three would, but let's assume that um, you're hitting a driver and you've got a distance out there at about 300 yards. And just for simplicity's sake, let's say there's a, a 10% dispersion. So we're at uh, 15, uh, 15, which is a pretty common dispersion pattern for an elite player. Probably a little bit inside that for a tour player. Maybe it's about 8%. So if I'm getting you to hit a series of shots, let's say 10 shots, your pattern, if you're aiming for this target, whether you draw it or fade it, is going to look something like this. Let's say you're a drawer of the golf ball. So uh, draw one to here. Maybe there's an overdraw. There's a push. It's a straight one. A uh, little bit of an outlier. Uh, and we start to get a plot that looks... Something like that um, when we hit. So there's a series of shots. And we have a, a dispersion and a blanket over the ball uh, that matches that. So that would be pretty common for most players. Occasionally, if you're a little bit erratic, you might get an outlier over here. And you might get a push that goes way off to the right. But that's generally sort of how it looks. Now... How this is going to work when we're on the golf course and um, what I want you to think a little bit about is uh, if we're hitting off the tee here and you've got a fairway, maybe got bunkering here, maybe some, some light rough or trees, let's assume that, and let me just redraw that a little bit. Okay, so let's assume that bunkers about here we have about a um, let's say this points at about 280 maybe this is about 300 uh, and back here is about uh, 260 for example so this is about in your landing zone now in this space here we have about a 35 yard space in here we have about we just say about a 27 yard space and then back here, we have about, a, say, a 32-yard space. Now, what a lot of uh, golfers don't look at when they're mapping courses is the – obviously, they know the carry. They don't look so much at the, the width as much as the depth. So it's important when we're doing this that we know uh, the width. You know, if this bunker, for example, is one that we can't really recover from, maybe it's a long par four, or just generally, you know, bunkers are going to add strokes to the – uh, to the game. If I know that your dispersion is, let's say it's about 28 yards across, and um, if I'm looking at this situation here, it's going to be a pretty tight drive. Now, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't go for it, but let's say this got reduced down to 22, for example, then, and, and again, it's, it's quite thick, rough or trees here. To me, that wouldn't be a drive that we'd be going for. Um, we need to either figure out, can we cross the bunkers? Uh, maybe the tees are back uh, on a particular day uh, and it's just not a, a smart play. In that case, we'd be laying back to, say, where our three-wood range would be uh, because it gives us a wider dispersion. Whereas if we're aiming for this spot right here and we threw this kind of blanket over the space, then that's where the balls could finish. Now, let's assume out of 10 balls or more, that you might get 60% of your shots within this space, but the other 40% are in here. To me, that's just not a smart play where you could be hitting back in this area and it's just a sort of a one club difference. So again, understanding this miss pattern is important. Yours might be wider than that, assuming it is because you get a few outliers. So my thinking is, as you start to use the ball, is does that give you a, a sense of, uh, more control, does that narrow the dispersion and does that become a better play for us uh, going forward? Uh, with a lot of my tour players, they actually have two two drives that they hit. 
One is sort of an all-out drive, which is kind of their max, which is kind of in the 90% effort, maybe a little bit more. And they have something that they can dial back, which is a little bit more controlled. You might find when you use a smart ball, it's a more controlled drive. Maybe it takes a little bit of speed off of things. It's a 270, it's a 280 versus a 290 to a 300. But your dispersion starts to get a little tighter Um, so when you're in certain situations where you've got narrow drives or drives that don't tend to suit your eye so much, then you go with that. And when you're in uh, maybe stressful situations and you just need a fairway finder, uh, you know, Justin Thomas has talked a lot about this, um, then that's the drive that you go for. So just wanted to throw that at you because I think it's important. And um, it's certainly um, something that's probably not talked about enough which is the uh, the width versus the depth. And it's certainly not calculated enough, in my opinion, uh, with better players when they're charting golf courses. So hopefully that helps. And uh, again, look forward to hearing your feedback.